Hello my friends and welcome to the video Secrets of the Move Tool. You might expect that this is a boring topic, but I'm going to argue that the Move Tool is probably the tool that you are using the most in your software. So it's quite interesting to look at it and see what it can do. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer from Vienna, Austria, and let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is duplicate this layer so we have the picture on top of the other picture. We can move it around, of course. That's the main function of the move tool, but you have resize function too, of course. And here are some uh, combinations. And the first one is interesting because when you hold the shift key, you can see here it holds the ratio of the picture. But when I hold the shift key, you can move it around freely um, without regard of the ratio. The interesting thing here is when you make a shape, it's quite the other way around because now when I move it without holding any button, there is no fixed ratio. So if I want to have a fixed ratio, I would have to use the shift key to do that. So that is an interesting difference between an image and a shape using the move tool. Another thing that's interesting is when you hold the control key and you resize, it's resizing around the center of the file or the, the object that you try to resize. And this works for both of them, as you can see. But on the right side, as you can see, it's holding the ratio. I cannot change the ratio. If I want to have the same effect on the um, shape here, I would have to hold the control key and the shift key at the same time. So click uh, for resizing and then as you can see now if I hold both keys at the same time and resize it's holding the ratio while resizing around the center. Okay another thing that's very interesting is when you hold the control key well, when you click and then hold the control key and then drag it's going to create a copy of the object that you're moving and you can do this with both of them as you can see here. It's a very easy and very fast way to create a lot of copies of things that you want to use multiple times in your picture. Um, then we have, when you look here, we have these bubbles or little round shapes when we select an object around it and they indicate not only the corners but also where activities is happening for the move tool because the move tool is interactive. So when you move to a corner it gets these two arrows and that means that you can um, rotate it now. So that's pretty useful. Don't hold it directly over this kind of knob here or circle because then you will go back to resizing it. Hold it a little bit on the outside. And this works on all of the corners and also on this button up here. The button is um, for rotation mainly. And there is another interesting thing to note here. And that is when you hold the shift key and rotate at the same time, it will rotate in 30 or, or 15 degree steps. So you can go, uh, as you can see here, minus 15, 30, 45, 60. So you can go and do this in steps. It's very useful. Another thing that you might not have known about the move tool is when you go to these middle points here and go a little bit to the outside, you can actually skew your file. As you can see here, goes to this direction, also goes to this direction. So you don't really have to go uh, into a special mode to do any skewing with your file. And of course, as you can see, this can be very useful for things where you want to adapt it to the perspective, for example, or just skewing, of course. So uh, let's undo this. And of course, um, we have, if you just grab these knobs directly, you can just resize it in one direction. So that's very nice. By the way, another thing that you can do when you click on the main area of the object that you want to move or change, uh, when you hold your shift key, it will move on a line and the lines are defined uh, by 45 degrees. You can see here, uh, on zero degrees and 45 degrees and so on 90 degrees on these kind of steps you can move it in a line which is sometimes very useful 
if you need that. And another thing that you see happening right now is these lines that are popping up. These are automatic lines um, provided by the software. It's kind of trying to guess what you want to do next. So you can see here, um, this the red line is always horizontal and uh, the green line is always vertical so you can know just by the color what's going on and here the red line marks the center point and there between the shapes you can see there's a number and this is the distance between the shapes so you can use this um, as a help to put objects at an equal distance without any other need uh, to measuring the distance so you can go and um, have kind of a visual feedback from that, a visual measurement from that. But another thing that is happening is that it's snapping um, to these areas. And of course you can turn the snapping off. You can go up here um, where it says view and then go to the snapping manager and turn off in detail what to what it should snap or not snap. But another thing that you can do is you can see here um, now it's snapping to different uh, elements like the center point or here it's lining up with the other object. So this might hinder my movement when I want to get to a certain point. What I can do here is hold the Alt key. Now you can see all snapping is disabled and I can smoothly uh, move the object around without any problem wherever I want to have it. So this is very useful. Um, Let's move it down here and then we're going to do another copy of the object. There we go. Uh, let's resize this and resize that real quick. And another thing that you can do with the move tool is uh, when you have your shift key pressed and then you click on different objects, it will select them together. And on the right side in the layers, you can see which objects have been selected because sometimes these blue lines are a little bit confusing. So this would look exactly the same if I just selected the two outer shapes. The interesting thing about selecting all of these shapes is first of all, you can put them in a group. For example, you can right click now and say group. So these layers are in a group. But the other thing that you can do right now is that you can resize them and they will hold their relation to each other even if the ratio is changing. As you can see here, they are kind of staying relatively in the same place to each other. But of course you can still hold your shift key and they will resize and keep the ratio of themselves and to each other, which can be super useful um, at some moments. For example, if you want to make your design or your creation more interesting, um, you could, for example, here I can hold the shift key, click and move. No, that was the wrong one. Sorry, I'm getting confused sometimes too. Uh, the control t key, uh, click and move. So now I made a copy of all these layers and then hold the shift key and resize. And now I have just a smaller version of it that I can put wherever I want in the design uh, to get some more interesting elements in here. As you can see, like this. You can do stuff with that. It's not a perfect example right now, but you are getting uh, what I wanted to say about that. Um, yeah, so these are some of the uh, secrets that you can do with the move tool. Another thing that I want to show you is in combination with the selection. And this is a little bit, um, you have to be a little bit careful about using this. Uh, let's delete the shapes here real quick. Uh, so there we go. Okay, so now here I have the picture and what I can do now is I can create a selection down here and now if I go back to my move tool, it shows me the same blue line and these circles around so I can do the same things as you can see. I can stretch it, I can move it and when I move it, it also creates a cutout in the back of the image. I can of course uh, also skew it and rotate it. Everything that I have done before but what you will notice when you look on the right side is that this did not create a second layer. And this is why I said you need to be careful about using this because as soon as you hit deselect, so you um, deselect the object with control D for example, you can't undo this. This is now part of this pixel layer. So when I 
resize it. Um, this is all together in one layer. As you can see, you can no longer select this element. So rather, if you want to do this, maybe rather select it and then make a copy so it's on an extra layer and you can go back um, to the original or you can at least select uh, the object again. Let's let's go back here. You can see here if I go control Z uh, to copy and then control V to paste. Now I have it on an extra layer. And uh, now if I move it around, I can always go back. If you want to have a hole in here, you can also hit delete. So you de um, delete the part that you have selected. Um, but you should copy it first because otherwise there is nothing left. Uh, to delete, of course. So, yeah, this is it. These have been some of the secrets for the move tool. If I left something out, if there's something more with the move tool on its own uh, that I didn't mention, please write it in the comments so I will do a second video. Uh, but I think I covered um, most or at least all of the functions that I know for the move tool. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my videos, I do two videos per week, so maybe subscribe to my channel. And if you want to support me even more, head over to Patreon, uh, where you get really interesting rewards. You can get feedback on your work and other cool stuff. Thank you very much and see you soon. Bye.